this is here are examples of household saving plans for 2025. Uh, so let's see here. Are we ready? Okay, so they've got the 52 week savings challenge, uh, which is of course, we, we all know how the 52 week uh, savings challenges work. So that's an easy one. We're, we're all familiar with that. The next one is called expense reduction and reallocation plan. So what it says here, how it works, you review your monthly expenses to cut back on items like subscriptions, takeout, or unused memberships. Reallocate those funds into savings accounts. The outcome is to create a substantial habit by redirecting funds, then increasing income. The tip, aim for a realistic, consistent amount each month to avoid budget strain. So really, to me, what it is, is you are, I don't know about expense, I don't know, why do they have to call it expense reduction and reallocation? All you're doing is cutting your subscriptions and not eating out as much and uh, cutting your Costco card. <laughs> and saving the money that you would have utilized uh, for that. That sounds like a fancy word, and I'm thinking that's not, that's something we're all familiar with, but I'm thinking that's not what we call it. Okay, so here's another one they call it. This is, like I said, this is from ChatGPT. The 80, 20, or 70, 20, 10 budget. How it works, okay, here we go. Hold on tight, folks. Is you allocate 80% of income to essentials, 20% to savings, or try 70% essentials, 20% savings, and 10% for giving, for giving debt, giving slash or debt. Automatically deposit the savings portion into a dedicated account. The outcome is to build a savings without needing to manually allocate each time. So the, the key thing is that without manually having to allocate each time because you're, it's automatically being deposited into your savings account. So you working folks out there, if you're working, and if you have the opportunity to have money dropped into some type of, even, even if it's a 401k uh, account or some type of savings, have, have them automatic. that's what I did. I didn't have a savings, I had the 401k, so I didn't see that money. But let me tell you, it helped me with the time that we retired. So that that's the key word there, is automatic, the same. No spend challenge. I've done this a couple times. <laughs> okay, so how it works. You choose a specific week or month to cut out discretionary spending, Amazon. Uh, examples given dining or shopping, Amazon. <laughs> Excuse me. Outcome is to save funds for specific goals and build meaningful spending habits. What it's making you see is just be mindful of where your money's going and how much you spend it. Right, right. Okay, that's we're. I think we're all, if not most of us, are familiar with the no spend challenge, right? Okay, here we go. Keep moving. Here's another one. Emergency fund with macro savings app. How it works? You use apps that round up purchases or macro save when you spend. Allocate those small amounts to emergency fund. Outcome creates a small, consistent savings stream without much effort. Tips at higher roundup limits if possible to accumulate faster. So I think I've seen this before. So like if you have a purchase of 1560, what will happen? Money the 1560 will be paid and the 40 cents would be dropped into a savings account. That's not bad. I mean that's that's one way you know that of saving. I haven't utilized that app, but I think that might be something interesting. Let me know if anybody else has, has utilized that. Number six, high yield savings accounts or short term uh, short term CDs. Yes, I believe in high yield savings accounts. If you're going to be putting your money in a savings account, put it a high yield, because a lot of these high yields you don't have to have a large. We didn't have that large. Have, you know, like some 10, 15, 20, 25. 30, you don't have to have that much money, and some of these are online. So you know, bricks and mortar. So sometimes the fees are less. We we don't have any fees. We can we don't have to have a minimum amount in that savings account. So that that bank's working out great for us, and we're getting a whole lot more money than we were getting before. So what I'll do is I'll put a list. I'll put a list of uh, a high yield banks. I know uh, like PNC, uh, Capital One has one. Um, there's a list. I'll go ahead and if I can find a list or a link to high yield savings accounts, I'll, I'll include it like right there. Okay. And also a description, but yes, definitely. And even if you can get a CD, 
I would love to uh, get a CD, but I think at this point in time, uh, I'm not ready to. But I'd like to get one because you could get short term to still make a little bit more money than if you were uh, in a savings account. Okay, here's the other one. 20 day paycheck saving room. So this is number seven. How it works. Each time you're paid, save a certain percentage, 10 or 15 percent within the first 20 days and don't touch that portion. Outcome, guarantee savings as it comes right out of your paycheck. Tip, schedule savings transfers right on payday for an easier habit. And I believe this to be true. I think I probably use this. I don't know if it's 20%, but every time we, uh, our pay or, or Social Security or pension, whatever you want, hits our check, there's automatically some money pulled out and dropped into a savings account. It's not the high yield account. It's just savings account. I call that my slush fund. <laughs> Because if I go over or if there's something that maybe unexpected happens, I go ahead and pull it out of that. You know, that's not my emergency fund. It's just like a little extra money that I have put aside and it's there out of each payday. It gets pulled out. It's automatically there. And then if I have, if I don't have to utilize it, it rolls over and then I try to stretch it or transfer it over to our high yield account. So it's, that is another way. I Like I said, I call that my slush fund. I probably shouldn't be using that term, but that's what I call it. Uh, that's another way to save and sometimes you don't realize how much you've gotten in there because you're not utilizing it. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, those are seven uh, that the chat GPT uh, suggested uh, for household saving plans for 2025. Let me know what you folks are thinking. So I thought that was kind of interesting because you know, we're, as we get ready for 2025,